my third of the transistor biasings. The following are the most commonly used methods for the transistor biasings. Okay, first is base register method. Second one is the emitter bias method. Third one is biasing with collector feedback register. And fourth one is the voltage divided bias. The first method is base register method. Okay, now we are discussing different methods so as uh, to get the output signal exactly of the same shape as that of the input signal. Okay, so this is our first biasing method. We are using NPN transistor. This is N terminal. It is grounded. It is taken as common. This is P base terminal. This is collector. A register is attached to collector as well as to the base and both are joined and uh, a supply is attached here, VCC. The RC is the collector register, the current flow along this direction, collector current. The base current will flow along this direction, this RB. base current now here the voltage is vpe base emitter voltage so here is the voltage between collector and emitter vce okay you know in this method a register rp is connected between the base terminal and the positive end of the VCC supply of NPN transistor. Here, look, RB register. Now, approximate, approximate value of RP is several hundred kilo ohm. The value is large because to get the small base current when without signal like a zero signal base current that is provided by the VCC the base current flows even without signal it flows through RP okay and it uh, this current also provides this current also provides a small positive voltage at the base terminal, base emitter junction becomes slightly forward biased. Now the beta current gain in common emitter configuration IC over IB, IC is beta times IP, okay? And the value of the I, B, and I, C, you know, they relate to the Q point. Q point is fixed, you know, with the fixing I, B, and I, C. The value of I, B, and I, C relates to the Q point. Q point is determined by these two currents. I, B is fixed by R, R B, okay? I see if I B is fixed, then what natural? I C also becomes constant. Now applying the Kirchhoff flow here, we say C, the voltage across R B is by Ohm's law R B into I B. Here the voltage is here the voltage is V P E. So therefore. This is a catch of flow, you know. Now, finding the value of 
find the value of RB from here. Now usually the value of the VBE is very very small. That's uh, this emitter voltage is quite small, you know. And often it is neglected. If we neglect VBE, the expression becomes very simple. IB equals to VCC upon RB. Now IB can be found from this equation. Again, this is a repetition as we just did before. All the same equations, okay? They just repetition, you know. Now stability factor is defined as the rate of change of collector current with respect to the leakage current. So for the a circuit is good if the stability factor, the value of the stability factor is less. So we need a circuit of a small stability factor. Now here ICO mean ICPO, leakage current collected to base when ammeter is open. So S is defined as the differential of IC with respect to the leakage current. ICO, here ICO mean ICPO. Now IC is equals to beta times IB majority currents plus the leakage current, ICEO. ICEO is related with ICBO by the equation. <coughs> so substituting the value of ICEO here, the majority currents plus the leakage current. See, refer my previous video for finding the relation between ICEO and ICBO. Now, differentiating this equation with respect to IC again. Just differentiating it. The S is equals to already defined above DIC over DICPO. Now S is determined from this equation. S is stability factor. So the relation becomes the very, very important relation of stability factor. Now in fixed biasing, IB is fixed, so IB, if the IB is fixed, so IB will not change with IC. IB is fixed, okay, and it will not change with IC, therefore DIP upon DIC becomes zero for fixed biasing circuits. Because IB is uh, determined by the base register, it, it, it becomes fixed. 
So stability factor only becomes beta 1, beta plus 1, beta is very large, approximately let me say if it is 50, then stability factor becomes 51. Stability factor is defined as like this. So beta is very large. So stability factor becomes 51. This is a very large value of the stability factor. So this is poor, you know, thermal stability. It is not good circuit because the S is very large. There are some advantages. But uh, the disadvantages, uh, you know, because of the disadvantage that it is poor stabilization because S is very large, so we never use it practically, the fixed by circuit. So there is a strong chance of thermal runway that the damaging the transistor. So it is not